welcome, welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to the Doe Show. Hope you're having a good day so far. Uh, if you're watching this for the first time, my name is Dustin Tibbetts. I'm a financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers, and we come to you every day at 1 o'clock live, 5 o'clock live, and uh, at our 1 o'clock show here. We call it the Doe Show because we try to help you get your dough straight in any way possible. Um, sometimes investing, personal finance, retirement, uh, it could be debt, you name it. We'll talk about it if we think we can help you. We are financial advisors at Jazz Wealth Managers. We manage retirement accounts. So if you have a retirement account somewhere else and you're just not getting what you think you need as far as education, assistance, someone to do the investing for you, or you're just not sure you like the people you're working with, maybe you'll transfer over to Jazz. I hope you'll check us out at our uh, website, jazzwealth.com. Also, you'll see our portfolios. We publish the performance of all of our portfolios. Unlike other advisors, we put it all out there, good, bad, or ugly. You can make the decision if we're a good value for you. It's all on our website. We have nothing to sell but ourselves, as we say, completely fiduciary. Well, you might have noticed some stuff on the wall here today. We're going to do a pretty interesting discussion. I thought it was interesting. You guys might hate it, but uh, you'll let me know. If you like it, you hit the subscribe button. If you hate it, you just leave. <laughs> That's it. Okay. There are only a handful of food companies out there that really control all of the brands. Now, we're not going to cover all of them today, but um, I'm talking about like the products you buy. We are not talking today about like a Chipotle, uh, like a retail store. We're talking about when you go to the grocery store and you pick up the Country Crock uh, butter off the shelf there. Who owns that? It's not Country Crock. <laughs> You're going to see in a second who it is. Um, if you buy candy, if you buy, uh, you know, the frozen meals in the sections, there's really only a few companies that dominate and own all those brands. Now, some of them are not in the U.S., although they are uh, have U.S. brands, and some of them just aren't public companies. So we'll try to talk a little bit about that. Um, now, the good news is there will only be a few names for you to focus on if you want to buy these food companies. Now you go, Dustin, what are you talking about, man? Pot stocks, that's where it's at right now. Crypto, that's where it's at, man. The, the S&P 500, the index funds, man, that's what everybody tells you to invest in. Why on earth would I buy a stupid food stock? Well, you might be surprised to know a few things today. Uh, our goal is to just teach you new stuff, so we'll see what, what we can do with this here. Now, the food providers we're going to talk about today fall in the category consumer staples. The S&P 500 has a number of different sectors, 11 to be exact, uh, that could be telecommunications. Well, actually, some of this is changing soon, but uh, it could be tech, it could be financials, consumer staples, consumer discretionary products. Well, consumer staples is the stock uh, sector of the market we're talking about today. So every symbol that we talk about will fall into the consumer staples sector. Now, consumer staples, what is that? If you've never heard that word before, basically it just means that these are products, these are uh, products that consumers buy that they're gonna buy regardless of whatever the economy does. If the economy is down, they're gonna continue to buy cigarettes. Today we're gonna talk about food. So these are products that, the butter that I mentioned, people are going to buy butter whether the economy is doing good or bad if you like butter. <laughs> People may buy some ice cream or whatever it may be uh, if the economy is bad. Now the overall economy, well, I should say, because of that, it's known as a defensive uh, sector. Not defense, but defensive. And so defensive just means, hey, as the economy goes up and down, you should have, be playing a little bit of defense here. These stocks should stay pretty stable, and if they fall or go higher, maybe only buy a little bit. So in the markets here, you, if you've ever seen like a, a economics 101 chart, you know that the economy goes in cycles. They call this a trough. They call this a peak. They call this expansion. And they'll call this contraction. And so you've probably seen a chart something similar to this, where you've got a, a trough and then expansion, economic greed, everybody's excited, all the way to a peak where people are not sure. For the last couple of years, people have said our stock market is peaking. And then you have a contraction where people decide to spend less. Maybe they don't have a job anymore. You know, economic conditions are kind of weaker. And then the process starts over again. You have a trough, expansion, blah, blah, blah. Now this happens over the lifetime of your investing. So if you're younger, you will see many of these over your life. But when you look at the 
uh, oops, the economic 101 charts, you see that over the long run, you've got a return that does this. And there's just no way about it, right? There's no trying to fake that. If you buy into the market now, it is highly, highly likely, if you're in your 20s or 30s, it will be higher than where you started. Every stat shows that. We've done a number of stats on that. But you get the idea here on the economic conditions. So consumer staple stocks are known as being defensive, okay? So we can get rid of this little uh, economics 101 for you. And now, um, why would you invest in these though, right? If they really don't get hit too hard when the markets are soft and they don't do too well when the markets are higher, why would you invest in these, uh, in consumer discretionary, right? Or consumer staples? You would do it because number one, they're not as volatile, right? The speed that these stocks move at tend to be pretty slow. If you look at like a Coca-Cola or a Pepsi or something, they don't move like Tilray, the stock everybody seems to be excited about. They don't move like Amazon. They just go about their merry way little by little. So people like these because number one, the speed is a lot slower. So they just kind of slowly do their thing. The other thing is they like the dividend. These stocks, oops, they tend to pay a decent dividend. And so this is another reason people invest in these consumer staples. They go, wait a minute, if I buy this stock or a group of stocks, and I'm not gonna get hit, if the market really is at a high here and the economy starts to move lower, you mean to say I'll be kinda safe, it won't be a big deal, because the speed is much slower, and I'm gonna get a dividend during that time where maybe the stock's not performing well or the economy's not performing well. People go, yeah, I'll take it. So they do that. The reason why these stocks here provide dividends is because they're not fast movers. You look at Amazon, you look at Netflix or somebody, those stocks are jamming, man. They move quickly. Look at Tilray, if you want to keep focusing on that stock. Uh, they don't pay a dividend. They can't afford to pay a dividend, but they're growing, right? Amazon grows, Netflix grows, so they don't have to pay a dividend. Apple used to not pay a dividend, but what happened? Amazon, or I'm sorry, Apple, they basically got every consumer on the planet, and so the stock started slowing down. And they said, well, we want to keep our investors. We need to keep people interested, so now they pay a little dividend. Kind of interesting. Okay, so that's consumer uh, staples stocks. They're defensive, you get the whole idea there. Now, here's the real thing. Over the last 10 years, how has consumer staples stocks done against the S&P 500? I just told you they move slower. Yeah, and they pay the dividend and they're pretty safe and cushioned around economic conditions. So over the last 10 years, how have consumer staple stocks done? I, I, I double checked this because I, I looked it up, I double checked it, I was shocked. Consumer staple stocks actually beat the S&P 500. The sector as a whole beats the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. You no, know, no, Dustin, no, you can't beat the S&P 500, man. Nobody beats the S&P 500. You know how many times I hear that a day? Remember, the S&P 500 is a completely made up group of stocks that they randomly pick and choose what they're gonna put, not randomly, but they just cycle stocks in over the years to keep it at 500 or 501 stocks. You can 100% beat the S&P 500. This is yet another example. Every few days I've been giving you an example of a, of a investment portfolio, exchange traded funds or whatever that beat the S&P 500. Now I'm telling you consumer staples have the benefit of moving slower. They pay you a dividend. They're defensive in economic conditions. And over the last 10 years, they beat the S&P 500 by about three quarters of a percent actually. So there you go, another example. Over the last 50 years, consumer staple stocks beat every sector besides one. So if all you did was invest in sector ETFs and you said, that's just the way I do it, man. I like buying my sector ETFs. I get a little bit of everything. I got my tech, I got my banks in there. I got my consumer discretionary, my consumer staples. Well, if you measured those against each other over the last 50 years, you have the best performing sector minus one. There's one other sector that beats it. And I'll let you guys take a guess if you want to guess uh, in the comments or whatever, which one beats it. So we got performance, right? So we got obviously a lot of good stuff going on here and we got performance. So now here's what we'll do. Let's go through a few symbols. What I'm going to do, we're going to go with the symbol. We'll do uh, sales, I guess. We'll do dividend. And we're going to do speed. How fast 
does this thing move? And I'll try to go here, right? Because I just broke it down for you how this works. So now we're going to break down the actual performance of these things and uh, kind of give you some ideas. So first we have General Mills. You guys have all heard of General Mills. The ticker symbol is GIS. So GIS did 15.7 billion in sales. Remember the whole conversation we had yesterday about Tilray and their sales. These guys did 15.7 billion in sales, okay? They made like 1.6 billion. Did I pull that chart up there? Yeah, they made 1.6 billion. They pay out a 4.3% dividend. I'll just go 4.4, you get the idea. Yeah, 4.43 dividend. Now, you get a slower moving stock. These guys own like Hamburger Helper. I wrote down a bunch of them. YoPlay, Hamburger Helper, haagen Betty Crocker, uh, obviously all the cereals, they own those as well. They pay you 4.4% dividend just to hang on to it. Just to simply put it in your portfolio, sit there and wait for it. Let me see right so you get that and it moves at about three quarters of the speed of the market so if the uh, the S&P 500 so if the S&P 500 falls 10 percent you're not gonna feel the full 10 percent you're gonna feel about seven and a half percent oh but wait you get a little dividend there okay so kind of interesting so that's uh, the first symbol you got General Mills now uh, it made me think let me go on to the other one which is uh, Kellogg's you've all heard of Kellogg's they have 13 billion in sales right incredible now they don't just do cereal either uh, they do ego waffles everybody knows egos come on pringles chips those things are really bad for you and cheez it's i love cheez it's so i happen to put that on the list because i saw they did that now they pay a three percent dividend right a little bit less there and these guys move at about half the speed of the market so look what you're doing you're building no wonder it's defensive You've got slower moving stocks here. The speed versus the market, S&P, is much slower in this case. So when we talk about speed all the time and you go, why is my stock not outperforming the market? It's not supposed to, right? So if you, I don't know, you build a bunch of stocks that do this, that are moving at about half the speed of the market, then you know what to expect. You see, everybody picks stocks in hopes of making a profit. Of course, we all hope we make a profit, but in the long term, the way we lock that in and make sure that we do get a profit is, of course, looking at the speed. Well, I'm not saying that we wouldn't know that it makes sure we make a profit, but you get what I'm saying. Mondelez. You ever heard of Mondelez before? This is one of those where uh, they get a lot of attention around earnings uh, season. Uh, because they have so many brands and so analysts love to look at this company and just divide up all the brands and figure out what they do I always remember them with Oreos. So they sell uh, Oreos. They're in uh, gum. They do Trident gum uh, My favorite they do Sour Patch Kids They've got a lot of different brands in there and they do uh, 26 billion in sales This would be our biggest one. I believe besides a couple that we're gonna talk about here They pay a 2.39 percent dividend and if you look at the speed of this one, it's really, it's about seven eighths. I hate to do that to you. It's about seven eighths the speed of the market. So it's moving very, very, very close the speed of the overall market, okay? So you got a few food names to go from there. Now, what's a couple others? A couple obvious ones, Coke. If you don't know the ticker symbol, the ticker symbol is KO. This is Coca-Cola. They do 33 billion in sales. That's our winner for the day. 33 billion in sales, 3.39% dividend. Very steady with this, by the way. Not only do you want to, if you're a dividend person, you want to invest in dividend stocks. I get it. If that's what you like, you want steady dividends. You don't want those ones that keep raising and, and dropping the dividends along the way. Now, this one moves at about three quarters the speed of the market as well. So again, if you're thinking defensive, you're thinking these slower moving stocks uh, they don't just do Coke, by the way. They're thinking about getting into cannabis drinks. So that just came out, uh, what was it, Monday or Tuesday? Cannabis drinks. Coca-Cola, that's crazy. Uh, Honest Tea, you got um, Dis uh, Dasani or however you say that. Uh, they do that as well. And the last one we'll leave you with here, uh, we could do Pepsi, I guess. Maybe we'll do Pepsi. Uh, we'll do Unilever, right? So Unilever, they're a global company. They actually don't trade here in the US, you can trade them on the, the New York Stock Exchange, 
but the actual company trades over in Europe. And so Unilever does 61 billion globally. These guys do Magnum ice cream. I see those commercials everywhere. Uh, Lipton tea. Uh, um, this is the, uh, remember I mentioned earlier, uh, Country Croc. These are the guys that own Country Croc. They own the Popsicle brand. Uh, they also own like hair care products and stuff like Suave, uh, Axe Body Spray, things like that for, for guys. Anyways, uh, they do, uh, what do they do? They do, uh, what would we say here? Uh, this is the same thing. They do about seven eighths, right? The speed of the market. Yep. Oh, Hellman's. <laughs> Hellman's mayonnaise as well. So that's that one. And then lastly, we've got Pepsi. They do 64 billion in sales. Is that the leader? Oh, Pepsi is the big winner. They do 64 billion in sales. It moves slower than Coca-Cola, right? It moves closer to half the speed of the market. They also do, uh, besides uh, Pepsi, they've got Quaker oatmeal, Cheetos, and Tropicana. Just some fun, uh, just some fun uh, foods that I like to eat, as you can tell by what's left of the candy up there. So um, that's it. I just wanted to point that out, uh, that don't underestimate these boring sectors. While everybody's chasing the exciting flavor of the week, you know, you, you've got a sector over here that beats the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. So it proves that it can do it. It also proves that it's a good sector to have if you don't have at least some of it. Maybe you have a sector ETF or maybe somehow you're participating in it. Uh, it, it obviously, you know, it's, it's worth your while. So uh, I'll answer some questions if you have any. Uh, foodies will take exception to the country crock as but Oh, yeah. I shouldn't have said butter. <laughs> Sorry. My, it's a good thing my wife's not here. She is a uh, foodie to the T. Uh, favorite uh, stock, Kimberly Clark. Yeah, now there's a couple we didn't go over today. Uh, one of them I wanted to go over uh, was Mars. We'll do that another time. It's not a public company. They are a highly secretive company, by the way. Those are the candy guys, uh, M&Ms and whatnot. Uh, consumer state, yeah, consumer state, nice, yeah. General Mills, you just added, David, nice, nice. Yeah, they're another one. We mentioned yesterday uh, that how interesting it was that the, uh, the food companies also primarily own most of the pet food companies as well, which is sort of like, you know, you, you, don't, you don't normally think of that, but a lot of them do, uh, and you, you've nailed it there. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ross, there's uh, whole generations that don't know what the Coca used to stand for in Coca-Cola or what that meant. And uh, I wonder, is this one of those things that 100 years from now, we're going to go, can you believe they put cannabis in sodas because they all thought it was healthy? I don't know. I mean, I'm not an expert on it, but uh, it's just kind of funny. I mean, in high school, they used to have it up on the board, the history of Coca-Cola in the cafeteria, and it showed when they were putting in trace amounts of co cocaine in the sodas and when they actually stopped doing it. And we all used to look at it and go, I can't believe they s it took them that long to stop putting it in the drinks. Incredible. But uh, hey, who knows? Maybe they still put it in there. <laughs> Pepsi's good, yep. Uh, Kraft Heinz actually used to be two separate companies. It used to be Kraft and Heinz, and uh, they bought uh, Kraft bought them out. Now it's Kraft Heinz. Uh, I didn't do that one. That's a good one too. That falls into your macaroni and cheese and things like that. Uh, but that's one to take a look at as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it. A little something different today. Uh, I don't know if you looked at the stock market, by the way, but having a rip roaring day. You got the S&P at highs, Nasdaq at highs. Uh, the Dow finally making new highs, catching up with everybody else. You know we're going to cover it later. Five o'clock, uh, we do the closing beat where we go over the stock market. I hope you'll join us for a moment. Uh, in the meantime, got work to do. I'll see you guys later. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours. Hey, wait, before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new FinTips videos? 
They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. 